Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I am blessed with a return guest, Brett. Brett, Brett, welcome to the hey. show, brother. How are you? This is your second nice or third time? Here. Yes, it is the second time. As a matter of fact, I, 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 I'm starting to believe the power of thoughts right now because mm. for the first time, I went with you on, on the legendary i was like okay you know what i wish i could go on wake up with legendary with dave and you know uh, 30 days after that i was able to come for the first time yeah. but yeah. then i was really busy and like it was like actually like three weeks ago i was like wow i watched uh like again the show on, on on facebook and then i was like oh damn I, I wish i could go again on a wake up legendary and then four days after i said that i, I swear to god I got email again. Hey, do you want to be there? I said, yeah, of course I want to be there. So I'm so blessed. So thank you for the opportunity to, to be here and to be with you and hang out with everybody here with uh, Wake Up Legendary. Yeah, man, we're, we're um, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. What what inside, what has been happening in your life or what has been happening in your business that you were feeling the pull that you wanted to come out and share? Uh, I think it is mostly about the mindset actually because yeah. i've seen on every time i go on a, on a, on a facebook and i see comments a lot of people they are commenting like oh you know what i spent so much so much money for traffic i don't get no leads or i did so many videos i did i get no leads and then i'm like i i just want to say that i was in that shoes as well and once i basically i was focusing on not having enough right and uh, this is basically what bring me a lot of or, or like put a break on my on, on my success just because because I thought that I am not good enough to do stuff and I yeah. was always like thinking oh you know the other guy he's doing it for 10 years so of course he's gonna make really good money but me I'm just starting out so what should I do but you, you know this is this is just only we have to shift this mindset I, th I think that when we shift this mindset then we can achieve so much more because yeah. right now I have not only I, I do, basically right now I do affiliate marketing on the side and my main like business right now are two e-commerce stores we have with my fiance for past three years. And it's like been doing really good. And it's mostly because I changed the mindset from, even from a training, which we have every Monday on a, on a legendary, basically marketers club, which teaches yeah. you all about Facebook, Facebook marketing, copywriting, you know, you can have, you can basically learn from that and apply it, you know, but most people, they, they just consume information and they think, oh, okay, I knew that, but they didn't actually apply it, right? So maybe they have it here, but because they apply it, then they are like wondering, hey, well, how come that my business is not growing? So um, yeah. I, I just like would like to address this. I would like to say to people, you know, just make sure that whatever knowledge you have, just go out and do it. And maybe just do it until you actually see results, right? Could I could I propose? Tell me if this is also what you're feeling and thinking. Is that a person does not truly know something until they have done it? Exactly. Meaning that just because you have you know about it because it's yeah. in your head. Yeah. That does not mean you know it because yeah. knowing means that you know it from experience. Exactly. Exactly. This is very important. Like even, even because I also teach martial arts, right? So even when I have right. students, I, my I, I, arts, I, that's exactly like, what I remember about. I you. show them something and explain to them something. And I, for example, it takes me like five minutes to say something to them and they do it. And they are like, okay. So now I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to leave you for five minutes. I go somewhere else to look at different people and then I come back and I say, okay. But I see it in, in my in my peripheral vision. I see that they don't do it. They just do it one time. And then when I come there, I say, hey, did you practice? I said, yeah, I'm going to show, show it to me. And I, I see that it's all messed, right? So I'm like, hey, you do it again, you know, because I, I see that you need to practice more. And yeah. I ask them so many times, hey, did you do it? Yes. Did you do it? Yes. But then I see... I, I, I can't, I can't tell that they didn't do it. Right. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's well, well, 
It's muscle memory. I learned that when I was playing baseball, when I was a young child, that it was less about the, um, it was less about like discovering one secret and more about muscle memory. And, um, that was, you know, taking swings, you know, taking swings, finding my rhythm, and then trying to kind of build my muscles uh, to where they memorized it and yeah. they did it as second nature. That well, that's what my dad called it, and what we all called it was muscle memory. Uh, I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but that's what we called it back in my baseball days. We still and, do call it like that. It is real. It is real. <laughs> yeah, man. So it's like really, really. There's no substitute for being in the gym and taking the free throws, you know, like I remember, yeah. uh, whether it was Jordan and there's been stories about all these champions and how they practiced, you know? Um, but, uh, the stories about the basketball player in the gym who is, you know, takes a thousand shoots, a thousand free throws a day. It's like, it's, it, these these superstars and the people who are successful did not get that way because they were born that way. Sure, they may have been inclined to be athletic, but we never see how hard they work behind the scenes because yeah. it's not that's not part of the finished film. That's not part of the finished game. That's not what's entertaining. That's boring to see somebody just do the same thing a thousand times without you, you know. Yes. But that's what makes somebody great. And I think, what does that look like in our business? How would you, what is that sort of practice? How would you describe an example of, of, of how somebody could practice? What is something that you've done? Is it, is it getting in front of the video camera? Is it writing emails? I mean, I think the same thing applies. The more emails I write, and, and for the first several years of my career, I wrote an email to my list personally every single day, and I my, my email marketing skills improved. Nowadays, I go live, you know, four to five days a week, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a better communicator on camera. I'm a better interviewer. What are some of the things that you've done that have built muscle memory and helped you to get results in this business? Yeah, so basically what I did is most of the time I, I tried also do videos, right? So I, on, on YouTube, TikTok, and uh, mostly I like short, uh, sorry, uh, long long videos just because I want to explain things. I, I, I feel that I'm kind of like, like a teacher. I, I, I want to explain to people why I'm doing things the way I do. And again, in the beginning, uh, it was really hard for me to press the record button. And I, I don't care if it's TikTok video or YouTube video. It's the same thing. Uh, I sure. experienced the same feeling of like, oh, my God, now I have to press it and it, on, on YouTube or even on TikTok. So it doesn't really matter. Basically, once you press it, then you are doing something. But what is good about this is that you are not live. You just you, if, if you don't like it, you can just delete it and you can start over. And for the first time, Huh. Yep. I don't know if I maybe did like 100 times one one take and then I was like, oh my God, I still didn't like it. But then when I look at other people, sometimes they, they just show only the screen. And I was like, oh, I don't even have to be on the camera. So then I experience or experiment with that. I was like, okay, you know what? Let me do this. So then I try to do my voiceovers only to see mm -hmm. like if I like my voice and then I didn't like it, but... Uh, some people say oh, actually sounded good and I'm like okay so once I start being comfortable with one thing let's say good with my voice or I wasn't be like panicking oh my god I sound like crazy guy right like people will not understand me with my accent but then that was my actually biggest fear I was like oh you know what my English is not proper right I don't know how I don't know how to speak grammatically correct but you know I was like hey you know what I see people uh doing it so i'm like yeah. hey wh what is the worst thing that can happen somebody cannot come from the from the youtube camera and punch me to the face hey you stupid right <laughs> they don't because no, there's nobody there it's just like the camera and uh, I, I i don't know why i was so afraid of it like really yeah. <laughs> it's just this, maybe a lot of people might think that it's real like fear of being on camera sure, but again sure. it's it's like you said, when, when once you do it over and over again, then you get more comfortable. And if, even if I say something wrong, 
then I I don't stop. I'm like, okay, whatever. I just I just continue because sometimes I think that if I would like or if I would see somebody on the screen like me who makes mistakes but doesn't care and do it anyway, then I'm like, oh, it's better than when you see somebody polished who is oh, he's professional. I will never be like that guy. But people might be like, hey, I can be like Brad because he doesn't care. He's making mistakes and it's, it's okay. So this is what I what I think that. Yeah, the practice of, of it is the most important thing. Doesn't matter yeah, if it's yeah. martial arts or business. Well, I'm so, still practicing. I mean, yeah. I don't I consider this, you know how they call like a doctor's office a practice. Yeah. Which is kind of scary, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. Um, well, this is a practice too. This is a practice. Everything is a practice. I mean, no one expects no one expects perfection except you from yourself True. nobody expects perfection except we expect it from ourselves why do we do that brett why do we place these unrealistic expectations on ourselves did do you think we get it from childhood do you think we get it from society uh did did I you struggle with perfection i think it's I, I really believe that you know for example me uh i remember when i grew up my dad always was like Hey, every time, because I grew up on a village, in a village. So very small, everybody knew each other. And it was like, every time you see somebody in the bus or on the bus or on the street, say hello. And uh, once, one time I remember I didn't do it. I really was like at home. Hey, you didn't say this person, hello. And I felt in that day, actually, I felt it. I said, I went to the bus and I said, hello, hello. Hello. Every time, you know, you go to the bus and there's each row of the seat. It's like, hello, hello. And I forgot maybe one guy. And then my dad knew about it. I was like, damn. So, you know, you always put this because he told me, I, I don't want to feel like that you are not behaving good. You know, that's why you have to always say hello to everybody. So I was like, to me, it was in the time it was annoying, but I, I, I did it because I didn't want him to come back to me and yell at me again, you know. So right. that at school, the same thing, you know, they want you to behave certain way. Like if you want to ask questions, just raise a hand. And you, like sometimes I even felt that I was raising hand a lot because I want to say something. But sometimes I prefer that, pe that, that the teacher prefers someone else all the time. I was like, oh, you know what? So I, I, I will not bother. I, I don't want to waste my time. And actually, I felt that when I was a kid, even at school. So then kind of I was like, you know what? I should be just normal. Right, which I don't want to be like the one who's normal, good at school. Yeah, normal is just fit in, right? Don't yeah. make too much noise, yeah. don't ask too many questions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, um, you know, inside, like, I started teaching Marshall when I was 15 actually, and I felt very good when I can explain something to somebody, and when I can see somebody doing something for the first time in their life feeling clumsy, feeling not good enough. But after like a month, they can see the improvement and they say, oh my God, I can't believe it. I was behaving like this before. And that makes me really happy. So yeah. to me, it, even in the business, it, even when I go to different trade shows and I, I see customer, when I when I give them our product and I, I see that how happy they are yeah. and they're like, oh my God, that's so, so I feel really good empowered basically. yeah i had a thought and that's that's amazing um I'm, I'm so glad that you're doing things that make you feel empowered and make you feel good about what you're doing that's what i was just um i was just talking about that um but i i, th I thought that when you were talking i had this thought and i think this is really um something that i'd like to get everybody's opinion on is that i really think that it's uncool to be perfect nowadays and it's cool to be like, like not perfect, like just be yourself, be sloppy. You know what I mean? Like in your, in your pajamas or sweatpants posting on social media and stuff. And I think that's a big shift. It's like a generational, or maybe it's not about generations. Maybe it's meaning that it's not about age groups. Maybe it's just about the time we're in, because obviously I'm going to get, you know, slapped aside my head by all my elders here in the comments that, Hey, we're young too. I get it. And, and so what is it? But I really feel that we have changed. We've made a shift in society to where back, um, 
when I was a kid, it was really about image management. Everybody, it was always about putting, like you said, I grew up the same way, like put on that smile, you know, every, you know, everybody, it's all about how you look. It's not about what's really happening in your life, but it's just about what you're presenting to other people. Oh, everything's fine. Oh, we're doing fantastic. Um, you know, everybody had their nice, their nice Christmas picture or whatever they wanted. And nowadays it's just, we're in a, I think also cell phones have changed it because now we're taking pictures of ourselves and we can do more. But my point is, is that it's less cool to be perfect and it's more attractive and people right now, the times that we're in, people don't, people feel uncomfortable or like you're hiding something if you're too perfect. Do you agree yeah. with that? Or how would you explain yeah. what's going on? I agree with it. And I think it's completely, it's all around the world just because uh, my fiance is a Vietnamese background. So she is from Asian family and they are really traditional. And I remember yeah. she's telling me uh, before when she was going to college, she said to parents, oh, you know what? Because they want her to go to the college. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to the college. But if I don't like it, I'm going to last maximum three months. And then I'm yeah. going to open my own business. And and uh, when she actually did that, that, she quit. And then she started doing her own business online, making nothing in the beginning and, and working like really many hours a day, just trying to taking pictures, putting it on the websites and all that stuff. Sounds like an entrepreneur's journey. They're, yeah, but their parents were ashamed of yes. her because yes. she didn't go to the school. And, 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 you know, it was like, she was like, you know what? We went to see uh, um, family members and they said, hey, how was Kim's school? And her dad was completely, he didn't want to talk about it at all. So, right. but look, it's now five years from that point. And now, actually, they see that how much we grew in the business. And now they ask us what to do. And now they are like, oh, online is cool because we, they closed their own crazy business. They didn't work, you know. And now we actually help them to live a good life. So this is, this is what, what really is good. And hey, those tables did, turn. Those tables yeah, turn, don't they, baby? Exactly. No school. Turn. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? They still think that it's good to be a lawyer or doctor. But it is changing. It is changing. I see this like that, like all these Vietnamese young kids here in, for example, Czech Republic, their parents work so much, so hard that they want better life for, the, for their kids. So they say, I'll go to the yeah. college. But now yeah. I see that the kids, they're opening cool places and doing different businesses than what the parents want them to do, which is kind of yeah. cool. Well, that is a very common thing in 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 uh, many families. I I'm sure it's very prevalent in uh, you know Asian families like your uh, like your girlfriend. Did you say girlfriend or fiance? Fiance. Um, yeah, yeah. Fiance. yeah, yeah. Uh, but my lord, and and you know what? Being a doctor or a lawyer is a good career. It is a profession. It's just that we as young people are exposed to more opportunity nowadays. You know, we're not only, we don't only have our parents or the people at our school who are telling us, well, these are your only options. You know, it's this college or this college, you know, nowadays we have the internet, <laughs> you, you know, we don't get our, we don't get our information from a, an encyclopedia that somebody in came and sold to us by knocking on our door. We have a cell phone. We can, we can be on tick, you know, we're exposed to a lot more information. Um, and that's a real, that's something that are that my parents didn't have when they were growing up. As a matter of fact, something even more tragic. In in and uh, um, I was talking about this, um, thinking on this the other day. And I'm not a Holocaust expert, and not to get too morbid, but you know, back in 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 the beginning of the Holocaust, there were people who did run from city to city to warn. And because and, and, and many didn't leave because they didn't believe that what they said was happening was happening. Now, imagine if we, you know, people suffered because of lack of communication and lack of knowledge. And and imagine if they had Instagram back then or they had, yeah. you know, you're seeing a bit of what's able how people are able to defend themselves better when they have better communication by what's happening with Ukraine right now and how they're able to be. So, you know, it's it's. 
it's hard um, for these families and these who have these traditional beliefs and want to see their children to go on in these same similar career paths. And these children, you know, we children, we kids, our generation had exposure to all these different choices. Now we got TikTok, we got Instagram and even more information and choices. And it's like, um, we're, we're really in a massive shift right now. We're in a, we're in a place to where, again, that old way of thinking, whether it be kind of the presentation perfectionism, you know, or the very traditional proper, or a lot of those things are, are, becoming less because people are being simply exposed to more information so they have more choices now yeah yeah that's uh for some people it's it's good that we have all this information and some for some people it's bad just because most people especially uh you, you know i think that a lot of people they take this information and they consume a lot of a lot a lot a lot of information but they don't do anything with it Right. But if you know how to extract, if you can be like curator, you can you can extract the right information and apply it to your business right away. Then it's this is fantastic time. It is fantastic. Well, for example, I when I go to a village where I grew up to see my family, my parents, they know that me and my fiance, we are working online and mm -hmm. still are wondering that if I stay there, let's say on Monday, Tuesday and wake up anytime I want and, and, and I just put laptop. Uh, on the table have coffee and they're like what you doing i'm like working and they're like i still don't get it how come that you work on, on on the computer like i i used to we used to go wake up go uh eight o'clock to be some in some office punch hours and and you know this is they still think that even though i work online with my fiance they still think that we have a physical job somewhere and they kind of yeah. like like it's it's kind of like an awe that they look at us like we are crazy you know so yeah. it's like well, you are yeah. you are and the crazy ones as steve Jobs said are the ones that change the world you know you're always called crazy before you're called brilliant you know you really are in in many cases in many cases not every case okay i don't want to give everybody a pass uh for for kind of you know but yes oftentimes when you're called crazy because uh you know you're pursuing something different or innovative or that people don't understand i mean facebook the platform that we're on streaming this right now is being called crazy uh last night their stock price just completely flat you know tanked mm -hmm. because people don't believe in the metaverse, mm -hmm. it, 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 I mean, they don't believe. They believe that the metaverse is a is a um, is a is a wasteful idea, and especially as we're going through and into you know tighter times economically, uh, you know, I think they've spent something like nine billion dollars on it this year, uh, developing it. But it's a great example of someone that's being criticized zuckerberg i mean they've already created products that have completely changed the world and now you're betting against that they're not going to create something else that's really and now they've got way more money and way more exactly. talent and yeah. you think that they're not gonna so you think that they're not going to create something interesting they've already got microsoft on board they've already got all these companies who want to be a part involved in the metaverse all this they own instagram they own whatsapp they, they don't even generate any income from whatsapp as far as i know i think they're just starting to roll out ads and all these people are calling them crazy now, hey, I might be crazy, but I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm more relating to Zuckerberg and in, in that than all the news people who are saying, yeah, "Oh, he, he's not. He, you know, this is a flopped business. This is, you know, I was wrong. It's going down. It's like mm, I, I think they're innovating, and you just think that they're crazy." <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think that I really believe in in the meta metaverse, and I think that it's gonna be. I think that like Zuckerberg and uh, and his companies or whatever is he building, he's a very smart guy, and and uh, I believe that right now it's still. If I go outside and ask people about metaverse, maybe people are like, "What is that?" Right? But no, in, even though they are in media, maybe in the United States, but here people they still don't know it. But yeah. when they kick in, and when it's gonna go up, 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 up. And when 
a lot everybody's gonna be talking about it even my grandma will talk about hey uh do you have your own metaverse or something then i know that i'm already too late right sure so now sure. we know that they are crazy yeah. so if we can see where or what kind of like usage can it have for marketers? It can be really good because there could be products that people might want to buy. The, the There could be like, you know, you can make uh, online yeah. academies where people can see each other like, you know, in life, totally. but with some good, totally. th- those eyes, you know, and you can, totally. you don't need to even travel. So, so you save money on air tickets and you can see each other. You can hug each other. I think it's going to yeah. be good. Uh, yeah. I it's, don't know it's, what I mean, school is going to be improving through this i think i i think i would like to see like because school is boring and like if i whatever i learn i learn it by myself just because i i kind of found it interesting and and i i look it up on google on youtube and everywhere but if there's going to be like a school system where you can be that into metaverse and you can study whatever you want then i bet you that i will be really good at what i choose so i think yeah. that uh, it could be like the information imagine, imagine, we have right now, it's going to change. Imagine your children at school being able to have an experience to where they could walk through Rome. Yeah. Without yeah. being there. You understand? Yeah. What if we could, what if, what if, what if people at a private school who never understood what poverty looked like could walk through the streets of, I don't know, name, name, name one of the, the hundreds of, of countries that's that's in well in poverty happens everywhere but what if we could walk through streets forest being i mean folks it, it, we're not they, we're not going backwards we're we're going to innovate this world until we destroy it i mean i i'm sorry to be morbid about it and it's not going to happen in your lifetime or your children's lifetime so you, you know you really don't have there's not you're not going to be hurt by it but we are going to innovate this world until we either make it a self-sustaining, wonderful, ongoing, you know, where, where we don't just, to, or we're just going to totally destroy it, but we're not going to stop innovating. And if any of you think that, you know, this whole creator economy that's happening, this work from home <coughs> movement that's happening, the gig economy movement that's happening, the fact that quite frankly, it's hard to, you know, a middle class person in America can hardly afford to pay their bills without a side hustle nowadays. If you don't, if you think that the gig economy, the creator economy, all these, you know, the non-traditional way of doing commerce, meaning that you no longer have to go into a store to shop for clothes, you can shop for them right online. If you yeah. don't think that's going to continue to evolve, then you're betting against all this. And this is probably going to be hard for you to kind of grasp. But if you immerse yourself in this community for a couple of months, you listen to these wake up lives, you look at, go through the training, you look at, you'll start to understand that the internet is not just a massive opportunity for big companies like Facebook, but their success relies on us engaging on the platform. And that's why TikTok shook things up. And TikTok brought a lot of creators over there because they put their content in front of people besides just those that followed them. And they figured out how to do that. That changed the game. Because now on Instagram, now on YouTube, now on Facebook, They're creating products that are helping you, the creator, get more exposure because why? They want you on their platform creating, not on the Chinese company TikTok. And so they are going to continue to evolve these products for you and for me. We are the not only the people who are clicking the ads, folks, but we are also we're like their affiliates, okay? Because we're the ones who are creating the content. YouTube already pays people who you can monetize your channel by running ads once you start getting a certain number of views. YouTube's been doing that. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram is now allowing you to both charge your consumers or your followers a a subscription fee. They're also paying you for the content and not to mention you can give them calls to action to go off the site. 
it, it, this is the reason why people are betting against this. If they are, is because they don't understand it. And you're right. The point that you made by the time your grandma or whoever has no knowledge finds out about it, it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. You know, and it's, and it's not like that doesn't mean that it's really too late. It just means that it, it, it just means that now everybody knows about it. Right now is the prime time opportunity to get started, I think, with short form content. If you can't do long form content, YouTube has been around for a while. So there's some really good creators on YouTube. But the short form video game is much more raw and ripe. And you can get on there and create an audience rather fast right now across whether it be TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. And if you're doing YouTube shorts, posting them on Pinterest, you can you can do different things. But right now is kind of like right now is the early days, folks. This is the ground floor for short form video. This you any one of you has a chance to build. This is not just a some will find gold, some won't. Every one of us has a chance to mine gold out of this ground floor opportunity. And, yeah. and, and people don't even realize that they're reels on Facebook. They don't even know. They're still just scrolling. They're, they don't understand what's going on behind the scenes and how us creators are moving from platform to platform, posting content wherever we can get the best results while still continuing to post on the, on the platforms like Facebook that may be trying to catch up to TikTok. But what I'm trying to articulate here is the urgency behind, be, be, you know, around the fact that it, we're early right now. It's early, not late in the game. Yeah, it is, uh, it is uh, very important to take action, you know, now because there is always going to be more consumers than creators. And with this kind of cool things, that means that even you, me, someone else who is just starting out right now, they can have their own audience just because, you know, just imagine there are people who have some kind of problems, right? And they overcome the problem. Now, for example, if I would have, I don't know, if I would be overweight, let's say, right? And then I figure out how to become fit, then I know that I can talk about it confidently to other people and I can attract audience to me that will relate to me. If I, for example, start a business with, I don't know, like thousand dollars and I make it like to $30,000 a month business, people will be like, oh, how did you do that? Maybe I will attract that type of audience because I overcame certain problem. And if I had that problem, then there might be hundreds of thousands of people who might have the same problem. People yeah. want to lose weight. They want to make more money. Or maybe, maybe I don't know, they want to know how to date girls, right? So there is always going to be somebody who has some solution for something. And if you are able to attract, because the way you're teaching it, then you attract the right audience to you, then, you know, who cares? There is thousands of others with the similar information just because those thousand people who sell the same information might be different than me just because I'm me, you know, and people yeah. like maybe talk to me, not to Peter, right? So yeah. this is what I think that like, even with my martial arts school, there's like 10 martial arts schools in, in, in Prague that teach the same thing, basically. And I don't care about them, really. I, I know that I, I teach my students the way I teach. And if people want to come to my classes they come and if they want to come to their classes they want to they will come to their classes so there is enough for everyone and i think yeah. that you know we just need to take action and 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 pull the right audience to towards ourselves yeah you're you're so right about there's always going to be more consumers than than creators um you can pull statistics you can you can do the research yourself if you're unsure about that you can fact check it uh i i know that half of the world's population used a facebook or meta product last month half of the world's population something like four billion people you can go and read the statistics right on mark zuckerberg's profile he did a, a, a update of how many people are using the products on fa actually mm -hmm. on facebook right now there's there's more there's more um, uh, interaction on Facebook, more active users, I believe, than there's ever been before. You know, so even Facebook, who everybody's like, you know, oh, Facebook's dying. You know, nobody's on it. It that's untrue. 
That's untrue. They've, it's not nine. You know, people say, well, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook, um, here's the, here it is right here. Let me, let me, uh, let me just show you. Okay. More people are using these products than ever before right now. It, you know, everybody's not on TikTok. People are using these products uh, left and right all over the place. So let me pull up his, his little, um, his, his, uh, his, his update here. So 3.7 billion people now use one of meta apps monthly. The number of people using Facebook each day is the highest it's ever been. Instagram has more than 2 billion monthly actives. WhatsApp has more than 2 billion daily actives. We're also seeing strong momentum in Reels with 140 billion plays across wow. our services each day. Overall, our product trends look better than some of the recent commentary I've seen. That's his, that's his really polite way of saying the peanut gallery doesn't know shit. That's, that's what he was saying right there. Um, so, you know, you can, you can, when you, when you read it from the words of an entrepreneur and you can see that, you know, it's, it's a long message. I read the whole thing yesterday, but, um, but uh, we're, we're, we're in a time like never before. I mean, we're in a time like never before to where these huge companies are literally they are killing themselves to try to figure out how to make us happy and how to keep us on their platform and how to pay us, make it profitable for us. I mean, us being on their platform, the biggest companies in the world from Amazon, where people are selling products on Amazon, a lot of Amazon's business is individual sellers. I'm not a huge fan of that because unfortunately what happens is Amazon begins to compete against you, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, so does CVS, Walgreens, and all these. Uh, you know, they they put a generic product, their own generic product, right next to your product, uh, and and uh, start to to siphon off the, off those sales. But the point is, is that these platforms cannot exist without us creators. Yeah. That's what you have to understand that without us creating content on the platform itself, there there's not going to be anybody there to consume it. So these platforms are going to continue to start paying people more, making it, you know, pushing their content out in more powerful ways. So people like us continue to create content on their platform. Um, why are you doing affiliate marketing when you've also been doing some e-commerce and drop shipping? What do you see in that business model? And what do you see in learning these skills that you think is important? Well, you see affiliate marketing, uh, it is a way where, especially for legendary, uh, I must say, it's where I basically just send traffic and that's all most of the time. It is just get traffic, go to a program like you 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 have you you have done great job with creating sales letter, sales letters uh have good pricing points all the system works so i don't need to really reinvent the wheel whereas where i have my own e-commerce store i have to basically get the same traffic but also we get a lot of, because right now is season for us and we have two e-commerce stores in the same season we get so many emails so many calls, uh, so many people want to, and if people buy something, they want to refund and maybe their size is different. So they, they try something on and they, ah, it doesn't fit me and they, they return it. So you pay actually postage twice uh, because you want for the customer to be really good. So that's, that's your, like, okay, you know, send it to me back. I will send you better one, better size and stuff. But, you know, this is all, like really we, we we wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and we, we go to sleep at two o'clock in the morning actually <laughs> like it's sometimes we we have lunch at six o'clock you know because it was so busy but when, when i see with affiliate marketing is just you only need to figure it out how to do the traffic the traffic that is good for the offer you know people who are really hungry in knowing more uh, wanted to invest in themselves not to 
basically re re rely on other people. Oh, you have to go to school. Or I thought that, you know, if when you're going to be the dentist, I still go to my parents' house and they think they are always telling to Kim to my fiance. Oh my God, if he would go to the, to be dentist, now he can fix my teeth. I'm like, but I don't want to fix the teeth, you know? So, so affiliate marketing is thing, you know, you can be affiliate for anything that you want. There's like whatever industry they have uh, products or services you can be affiliate for. You don't need to really be affiliate for only legendary or only for products that you find on ClickBank or on Amazon because there's so many ways that you can find products. Maybe not, maybe there are products that people, only a few people promote, right? So if people are afraid, oh, there's too much competition in promoting whatever, whatever, then it just find something that you like and then you can maybe try the product on because I believe that you need to be product of the product. I think that if you don't buy legendary course and you try to promote it and you don't know what's inside, then you're just basically, mm, you, you basically it's going to take too much time because you, you cannot speak from your experience. You cannot speak of, you know, you, you cannot even learn. Like even if you learn from legendary marketer, you can use the same information. Even watching this uh, wake up legendary every day, and you can always get some kind of like tidbit information and you can make short form content on that. Right. So this is the it's basically easiest way to do business online because you only need to focus on traffic and the traffic yeah. from like YouTube videos from from uh, from TikTok, from uh, Reels right now from Facebook or from even even uh, Twitter short form content like tweets is now getting really i'm just trying to test it out so elon so this is another thing elon just bought twitter do you think yeah. that 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 company's not not going to get innovated oh it's going to be better that's why now i'm practicing my tweets because i know that in a couple months i will be good tweeter <laughs> because it's all about copywriting right it's i'm like, practicing like, my right. tweets <laughs> So it's good platform. Twitter is good right now. I think good platform to practice attention grabbing with words. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, Twitter is a great platform to to figure out how do I say what I need to say and say it in a powerful way in 140 characters. Yeah. yeah. It's a great place to practice that. Saying more with less you know, saying more with less. So, uh, this is, this is being more clear, right? Yeah. Um, we've, we've got, uh, uh, I mean, if I, um, we've got some training on, on Twitter. Uh, I mean, it, it's just, you know, uh, Jamie says, how do you get the traffic rolling? You pick one strategy and get started, brother. You pick, pick mm -hmm. one strategy mm -hmm. and get started. Um, you know, there's plenty of, of, uh, of training, um, uh, daily here on wake up legendary where we're talking about how to get traffic and so forth. I mean, if you go back and listen to any 10 episodes, just say, d l listen to pick any time, whether it's today and go back 10, just throw a dart at, at a date and go and listen to five or 10 of those. And you will pick up strategies. Now, if you can afford or want to buy some of our more advanced training, like the blueprints, you know, we break down specifics about how to generate traffic on each one of the platforms, including Twitter, including Twitter. Um, some really, as a matter of fact, we have people inside of our community um, that have been building strong businesses completely and totally on Twitter, as you said, because if you're going to do affiliate marketing, specifically, the thing you need is traffic. Traffic is like cash flow. It's the lifeblood of your business. And that's why we love affiliate marketing for people to get started, whether they're an affiliate for legendary or whether you become an affiliate for another product or company, the ability to get started and only have to focus on one area of your business at a time versus what you were just describing. Yeah with your e-commerce business, which is you have to focus on the marketing, the tech, websites, funnels, ads, you know, everything, support. shipping, support. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes if, for example, like uh, UPS comes early today because they are so busy, so they are going earlier to pick up the goods. 
and I still have so many packages to pack. Then I have to go at night and I have to go to their depot and actually deposit my boxes over there as well. So it costs me also gas and everything. Takes time yeah. basically to go there for the minutes, whatever I live. Uh, for the minutes there, for the minutes back. So it's yeah, it's it's just. But you know, what? I enjoy it. I enjoy this type of process, right? So there's but for people who would be like, oh, this is too much work. Then I I, I really think that being affiliate is is good options. It's really good because like like uh for legendary on 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 YouTube for example, I I I I, I track my traffic. So every time I post videos. On, on my YouTube and I promote, let's say, something else, then I have a, tr a code and, and basically I see that a video that I have for Legendary actually bring me more. Actually, the one video that is reviewed that I posted like uh, basically in 2021 or I don't know when I posted it. It's a, it's a, it's a, the review. Then that actually earned me $10,000 with Legendary. Yeah, that one. <laughs> And, and and the first actually first thousand dollars commission from the video I got when this video had only seven hundred views. So 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 now for example I know that in the lifetime of this video YouTube paid me three hundred ninety four dollars for like ads, but Legendary paid me ten grand for that video because I, when I look in my back office inside Legendary Marketer I see the snippet and it usually comes from this video. People who, who actually people who buy the the whole blueprint, they actually comes from from this video. Yeah, and it's something special. Yeah, no, um, I I get it, man. Uh, and this is a great strategy that like all of you could use right now, not just to review legendary, but to review any company. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll give you, there's a, there's a company called wealthy affiliate in there. I don't mind giving them a plug because I'm going to give you their entire strategy right now. There's no need to buy their, uh, their training. Um, only because they, they've, they've, they've caused me such a headache over the years. And the reason why is because they, they teach this strategy. It's the, the, the whole strategy is to go do reviews on gurus and go re do reviews on products and go do reviews on companies exactly like you did right here. And they'll usually, if you see blog posts that are like, is Dave Sharp a scam or is like, it's usually one of their people who wrote an article on me or wrote an article on legendary or something. And of course they have their own affiliate links littered all throughout the, 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 you know, the blog post. It's the reason why is because before somebody joins, uh, you know, some sort of an MLM, for example, or before they buy a course, like buying a course here from legendary or before they go and begin to follow a guru or something, a lot of times they'll go and do their due diligence. They'll go and do their research, right? Where do they go to do that? Well, they go to the Google product suite, okay? Google owns Google search engine and Google owns YouTube. And yeah. so we go to Google, we type in whatever we're looking for, whatever we want to do our research on. And guess what? These videos come up. These blog posts come up. And if you give a good review, not just a crappy one, if you try to give an unbiased review and, 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 and you, and you, you know, there's, there's, there, there's so many, uh, you can keep it really simple. You can keep it really in depth, but the majority of the ways that you end the video or the blog post is just by simply saying, Hey, hopefully this was useful to you throughout doing your research. If you want to know my number one recommendation to make money online, or if you want to know my number one course that I recommend to get started in your journey in internet marketing, or my number one recommendation for where you should buy your dog food and dog treats, or mine, right? You can do this for any and every industry because every and any in any industry has hundreds of different companies or products or people that you can review and it's done for you content essentially because you don't have to have a success story with it you don't have to have anything you're just reviewing what exists out there and it's good if you go through and, and try to learn is and don't do a crappy review try to do something to where you sound like you know what you're talking about and you, you're you know and that usually doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, if I was going to do a YouTube video, I might 
you know, on a company or a product. I might go opt in. I might even buy the thing. I, I don't know. I would do whatever I had to do because the better the content, the more results you're going to get from the content. And then at the end, again, the call to action is so simple. The transi transition is so simple. I hope this was really valuable to you. And I hope that you learned everything that you were looking to learn about said product. Now, if you want to know my number one recommended VR headset for you to explore and do work and do your business and enjoy your friends and family around the world inside of the metaverse, then I recommend you go and buy these VR glasses. It, yeah. it works with anything and everything. And it's really cool that you brought that up. What else worked for you in that review video besides just doing the video? Is there any other specific things you could call out that uh, that you could give a tip on through doing review videos or blog posts? I think that, that, that basically you you said most of it. Uh, there is the, the call to action is at the end or maybe even in the middle of the video is important. But if you do it, like I tested sometimes the call to action maybe in the in, in the beginning maybe in the first minute then in in, in a in the middle of the video but if it's at the end of the video i think that the people are more likely to buy or to to take you up on the offer just because they 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 watch the whole thing and if they watch the beginning only and they just click to be curious they are only basically curious they just want to see oh what you're selling but right. if it's at the end uh, then, then they, I know that they are interested. They know right. that they, there is something that they, it makes them to watch the whole video. And then they say, okay, you know what? I will go and, and, and try to figure out what it is. So yeah. uh, when I do call to action right now, I, I, I do it only in, in, in the, at the end of the video, even though I might have maybe more signups for leads when I do it in the middle. But it's I, I, I'm not going. I, I don't want to have large number of uh, leads that they don't later on not even open the emails or something. You know, I, I want to have somebody who says, "Okay, um, Brett, you know how you do it." Maybe may, even I like people to send me emails and, and maybe I sometimes I go on Zoom with yeah. people and try to make them understand that basically business is business and you cannot yeah. go with average mindset to suddenly become rich business owner you need to change the mindset and yeah. i can help them usually if i go on the zoom call with them later on just because i can tell them what really takes to make normal business or even what does it take to just be employee after you have good college degree because yeah Many people think eh, I go to the college, I have a good degree, and then I have a job that pays me, I don't know, 100 grand a, a year. It can happen, but to yeah. most people who actually go from the school like this, they, they don't get a job right away. I, I know people who are um, doctors, let's say, even now, because uh, I don't want to bring it up, but, but I know people in Ukraine that... They are doctors and they come to Czech Republic right now and they are just working as a cashier. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah I there's know a there's different, right? But you never know. You cannot you cannot guarantee that right. you're gonna be doctor when you finish the school. That means sure. you cannot sure. even guarantee when, when you finish training from legendary marketer that you're gonna be successful. It's you're gonna be only successful when you do it. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I, I, on the on the YouTube thing, I wanted to follow. This is our affiliate marketing business blueprint. Okay. And I'm going right down here into the YouTube uh, section, because as you can see, the exact step by step, exactly what to do. Somebody asked where to get traffic. Well, look at this. Look, look, look at these sections. You just pick a strategy, whether it be Facebook funnel, whether it be TikTok funnel, whether it be YouTube funnel, whether it be the Instagram funnel, the Pinterest funnel, right? No matter what your what your um, uh, what your strategy is, you know it is a it's in here. You know it's in here, and so um, so I wanted to show you something specifically about the uh, about YouTube. Now there's this thing, this this particular case study that Big Mark did at one of our, um, and he's a he's a he's a he's a YouTuber, uh, and and he's he's built a, a 
a massive channel and, and done really well. Well, he did a presentation and I wanted to just share this with everybody without giving away the entire course and product for those who, who bought it, just show you this, this, uh, this, this kind of, um, this kind of, uh, you know, where you should put your, where you should put your, your call to action. So for example, at the beginning of the video, there's a little bit of teaser and a little bit of proof. Um, uh, teaser meaning, at, you know, hey, here's what I'm going to teach you in this video. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to reveal my number one recommendation for how you can do this. And, uh, you know, here's what, you know, here's the sites or here's the businesses or here's the person that I'm going to be talking about um, uh, if you're doing a review video, right? You don't particularly need to show any proof. If you were teaching a strategy, um, even if you were teaching something on dog training, it would be a good example, a good idea to maybe say, would you like your dog to sit like this nicely while you're having dinner? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how in three simple steps, right? That would be an example of, of showing proof. Um, and then you just get into your content, not pitching, not even mentioning that you have something for sale or something that you're recommending. In the middle of the video, you might simply give them an invitation or a call to action to hit that like button, subscribe to your channel because that's important. And then you continue with the content. When you, when you, when you ask just real quickly for something and then go right back in, but you don't pitch something, you just say, hey, you smash the like, it'll help the channel. Now let me get back into the content. Boom. They're like, man, you know, wow, this is they want to, you need to give them results before they trust you. You need to give them results, give them something that they could get results with that they feel like, oh, I could take this and get results with it. It's called results in advance, right? Something that Frank Kern kind of coined. I don't think he turned it into a product, but I did hear him teach that back many years ago, that concept of results in advance in your training, in your stuff, teach them something that they could get a result with before you ask them for money, right? Um, now you go into the gold reveal, like, um, you know, let me summarize the, the, the steps, or let me tell you the third and final most important piece of this puzzle in order to make your dog sit there patiently as you eat your T-bone steak, right? And not get up until you ask him to, okay? Well, this final point that I'm going to tell you is the most important one, right? The gold reveal, right? And, and then you might, talk a little bit about that for a moment or recap what you what you said inside of the video but then you're going to give a call to action and the reason why he has call to action slash story right here is because it's always better to even wrap your call to action inside of a story because if you wrap your call to action inside of a story it it helps the person make more it makes more sense why you're recommending it if you think back to when you were a child, what was the number one thing that you said? Why? <laughs> why? You wondered why. Well, that never went away. You just got pissed off when your parents or whoever said, because I said so. So if I'm a marketer and I just say, click the, act, click the call to action, click the link in my description because I said so, you're probably going to be turned off by that. But if I explain, here is why this is my number one recommendation, because these particular dog treats that I use, and that was my third and final suggestion, is that these are the dog treats that I give my dog and I use, and they work better than anything else. And the reason why I'm going to give you the link down below for you to go and check out those dog treats and try them wrapped inside of the formula that I gave you. OK, is because I believe these dog treats are going to help you get the same results with your dog that I get with mine. So you can go ahead and click the link down below inside of my description. It's an affiliate link. It'll help the channel um, help support the channel, but it will also help you complete the the uh, the formula that I've taught you. So go ahead and click that link below. Pick up your treats. Make sure you also download my one page document formula inside of uh, that I'll send to you once you enter your email into my landing page over there. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Right. And what's so powerful about this is that it's a conversational sell. It's not a hardcore pitch. Um, it's also an educational sell, right?
It's uh, you educated them. And somebody is an, a, 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 an educated buy person will buy so much, it'll make your head spin. Whereas somebody who is not educated about the product will not buy no matter how good the deal is. You can True. know it's a good deal, but if they don't understand why it's a good deal and what it does, et cetera, they'll never buy. And that's why it's better to educate them before you ask for the money rather than say, well, I'll tell you after you pay. See, that's that's the number one way people fail in business. They don't get that. It's an employee mindset. Pay me first and then I'll do the work. No, let me show you what I can do. And you know what? The same thing works when like I have people who actually they were just here, gardeners, people who mow the lawn. I like to give workers a tip first, not at the end of the job. Why would I do that? I want to tip them at the beginning of the job so they know, hey, this you, you understand what I'm saying? They understand it's that kind of results in advance. I want to get what I want. So I'm willing to go above and beyond, whether that means parting with my money early as an investment in these workers, or whether that means being willing to create a 20 minute video and do some research and educate my client, educate my, my, my prospect before I expect that they're going to do anything that I want them to do. Right, Brett? That's fantastic. Uh, this actually, this last 15 minutes, I'm going to rewatch it so many times now <laughs> because it's is gold. Uh, definitely like great ex example of one of the best call to action I've ever actually heard on live free call. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, brother, let's wrap up on that note, OK, sure. because listen, you've got a lot of things going on in your life, as you've explained. And um, I uh, I got to check on my calendar and see what I've got going on today. Uh, uh, <laughs> but um uh, I know I'm going to be wrapping up the decade in a day here in a little bit with Matt. Um, oh. And then maybe I'll, I'll get the, uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity to take my wife out on a boat ride later on this afternoon. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but uh, dude, Enjoy. it's been Enjoy. so, thank you, man. Thank you. And, uh, and thank you so much for wanting and being willing and being so open and ready to come back and talk to us and share your time and your, uh, experience and your honesty. Thank you so much, brother. And I'm looking forward to doing a, another episode with you here yeah, soon. Sure. Anytime. I'm always up to be here, you know, hanging out with you and, uh, and everybody here. It's um, always my pleasure. All right, Brad. Well, uh, Hey man, keep up the great work. Be legendary. We'll talk to you soon, brother. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank See you. you, man. All right, my friends, uh, take care. Have a fantastic Friday, a legendary weekend. We'll be back here on Monday as we always are. There's going to be one thing as consistent as the sun rises is, is that we'll be back here on Monday the same way that we are every Monday. So you can count on that. We hope to meet you back. Have a fantastic weekend. Make the best out of this weekend. Use the momentum and the excitement that you have right now to take action because there's going to be times in your business where you're not going to be as excited. So you got to ride those pink clouds until the wheels fall off. All right, my friends, peace. Get out of here. Be legendary. Have a beautiful day. Bye.